Macy was always there for me. She would always tell me, don't feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> I can remember my sister teaching me everything from how to roller skate to how to straighten my hair, how to dress in school. Unless my mom was not able to get out of her bed, she was going to be at church. Seven days a week, that's where she was. Well, Jessie always made people feel special, and she would tell her girlfriends that I was her best friend. Ryan and I were very close. She was my only child, and, and we were kind of, you know, best buds. She was a total hippie mom. She cared about the earth and, like, loved Christmas. When she said that she wanted to become a teacher, it wasn't a shock to anybody. She started collecting new books, so when she became a teacher, she would have a huge collection of books for her students to be able to read. She'd do this fist of contempt when she was pretending she was mad at you. She's just like, fist of contempt, and then one day she decided to change it up. She goes, now with added Italian flair. <laughs> I'm just going, where did that come from? She really spent money on her perfume. Anytime we got dressed for church or was going somewhere special, she would always spray us. She made a difference in a lot of people's lives just because of her enthusiasm and her joy. She was just amazing. It was a Friday. It was a Tuesday. Wednesday. Oh, it was a Thursday. My mom, Cindy Yule. My sister, Victoria Soto. My daughter, Brian Mace. My mother, Ethel Lance. My sister, and Macy Bro. My daughter, Jessica. Redfield Gowie was shot and killed in our first grade classroom in Sandy Hook Elementary School. In the mass shooting at Northern Illinois University. She was killed in the Aurora Theater Massacre. In Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Watching an Amy Schumer movie in a theater at the Clackamas Town Center shooting in Portland, Oregon on December 11th, 2012. It was exactly two weeks before Christmas. Yeah, she had um, come home to grab some, you know, have more sweaters and, and things like that, sweatshirts. She called and said, ooh, I smell this Banana Republic perfume. I sure would like to have some of that. I bought the perfume, but I didn't send it right away. It was close to Christmas, and I remember her asking me if I was going to get a Christmas tree. And I said no. We just hugged each other goodbye, said we loved each other and stuff like we usually do. Just kind of gave her a hug and said, you know, we'll see you, kiddo. Love you. Monday night, I came home from work, um, and there was this like little Christmas tree outside my door with this little box of like Christmas ornaments and lights and all that kind of stuff. I remember her just saying, yeah, I, I just wanted you to have a Christmas tree. So I talked to her for a little bit, finished packing and ran out the door and never said goodbye and never, never even thought twice about it. And that was the last time I ever saw her. Her best guy friend went to visit her, and I almost went to visit her with him. I was thinking, well, that might be fun, and to be with the kids again, everyone together. And then I thought, oh, you know, they haven't seen each other in a year. So I changed my mind. And you can't what if, but you do wonder if I'd been there, things had been different. I can just remember that night like it was yesterday. Like every detail to it. My mom came back to the room hysterically crying and telling me. I actually saw the news of the shooting come in like right after it happened on Twitter. I called my mom. I could hear my mom's voice. My daughter had been calling and then my nephew had been calling. I knew something was up. And she told me not to worry, that there's been a shooting at Vicky's school. They don't know where she is. They haven't gotten a hold of her yet. I figured she's probably fine. Like, there were thousands of people there, and what are the chances? 
and finally got a hold of one of her friends who said, yeah, she was in that classroom. Less than 40 minutes later, I got a call from Brent telling me that Jesse was shot six times. Her husband, Robert, answered, and he said, he said, your mom has been hurt. And I said, is she alive? I just, like, I couldn't bring myself to say, is she dead? I just kept asking, like, God, like, please don't take her away. I couldn't see my life without her. I called my dad, and he finally answered. And I asked him what was going on, and he told me that they were 99% sure she was dead. He was just waiting to identify the body. And moved us to another room, and in that room was a chaplain. And uh, that's, that's kind of when I knew. <laughs> and that was the day that my life stopped. My mom's life stopped. And our whole world just came crashing down. For two days, I sat in my apartment. I didn't wash. I just stayed in my pajamas. Even in logically knowing she was gone, my heart and my head just didn't want to believe that. You're never the same after that. None of us are ever the same. A huge thing that was important to my family is where it was for people not to forget who she was. You can name the mass shooters, but how many of us can name the victims? Not many. Cindy, you all. Victoria Soto. Ethel Lance. Macy Bro. Ryan Mace. Jessica Redfield Gowie. It doesn't bother me to talk about her. I love talking about her because in a very real way, I, you know, she's with me every day.